Hello and welcome. I am working on finishing my second bowl of Frog Morton across the pond. The second Frog Morton in the series that I have tried. And um, smoking it in this nice estate sale pipe that I bought. I can't read the impression. I want to say it's Gun Hall Gum Gum Hill. I just can't read it. I feel like it's been buffed out previously. It does say London underneath, and it's very similar to a K. Woody because it has this stinger in it. Stinger's a little dirty, and this is after uh, I had cleaned it um, after I bought it. It's a very nice, interesting pipe. Has some nice wood grain, but there is, I don't know if you can see it, uh, a little wear on, on the rim there. Um, there's also a, a chip that has come out, but still smokes good. Uh, I was able to remove a lot of the uh, cake that was inside previously. Um, cleaned it out with a little bit of uh, Southern Comfort and it's been sitting and drying Oh, probably a couple weeks now. So I had no um, impressions that there was going to be any leftover flavoring from the uh, the previous owner, whatever they smoked. Um, so what did I think of the Frog Morton? Well, let's see if I can get this lit again. Uh, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of Kia. Uh, it's a lot of Kia Syrian blend. Not familiar with the Syrian tobacco. And even towards the end, it still has uh, a lot of the smoky lot of Kia flavoring. Definitely not an overwhelming uh, Latakia flavor. It's uh, blended fairly well with the Syrian, which kind of reminds me of a uh, Burley. Uh, I know that if I'm getting a lot of these terms wrong, that people are going to probably comment and say, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, which I admit I don't. Uh, you know, I'm the guy that has been going from Captain Black to things like uh, Velvet, Prince Albert, um, Borkum Riff, and quite frankly, whatever I can grab that's over the counter of the last 10, 15 years, not really knowing anything about traditional pipe tobaccos. So this is me learning, and um, if you don't like it, find another channel. So anyways, uh, my impressions, I honestly don't care for it so far as much as Frog Morton Cellar, which I know is the preferred Frog Morton out of the five. And I actually um, discovered today that I didn't order one of them, which was the original Frog Morton. Oops. So that'll probably be in my next purchase, and I don't know when exactly that's going to be. Um, but it's on my list. There's quite a few that I want to try over the next uh, couple years. Uh, maybe I'll discuss that list in a future video, and I can get some feedback as to whether or not to skip something, or if something is severely overrated, or if there's a cheaper alternative. But... Um, Currently, I'm enjoying this, and it's not lit anymore, with Gonzo's Burning Sun Red Ale. Actually got a couple four packs of this uh, on sale. Five dollars for a four pack, and if you go into Gonzo's Big Dog Brewery, it's usually 
uh, for closer to five dollars for a pint so not a bad deal plus it doesn't taste skunk it doesn't I think he just probably canned the surplus and it wasn't moving as fast as he liked and uh, wanted to get rid of some so took advantage of it got a couple and honestly I have never bought the burning sun at the brewery and um, I was really impressed when I got home so as for a red ale might become a regular thing so um, frog morton across the pond I'm going to smoke a couple more bowls of this over the next uh, week or two and finish my impression of it to see whether or not it's something I want to reorder at some point. Uh, might not be a bad idea just to get another can and stick it in the cellar just in case. I might develop a taste for it. Uh, but as of right now, I'm preferring the Frogmorton Cellar over that. And I'm still really impressed with the Deep Hollow. Uh, not sure what all the uh, negative reviews were about on uh, smoking pipes, but um, and really I can only think of one offhand where some guy was trying to say it was overrated, don't know why people were speaking so highly of it, and maybe I just skipped all the other uh, uh, reviews that were praising it, curious as to what somebody didn't like uh, after trying it but um, didn't really get an answer just overrated don't see what all the hype is about uh, I ended up leaving my own review because I was like I really like it I don't think it was accurately uh, described for the type of tobacco that it is um, but hey I liked it so it didn't bother me uh, as for Frog Morton uh, Latakia is definitely something that is new to me and trying all of these uh, smoky flavored blends is uh, definitely a new adventure and uh, I did learn today that they named this after something out of J.R.R. Tolkien's um, Lord of the Rings novels. Apparently Frogmorton is a part of the Shire and uh, I don't remember it. He threw so much stuff in those books I can't absorb it all and I know these guys uh, there, there are guys out there that can just quote it, they know the whole map, they know where certain people are, their, their lineage and where they're from and who's related to who and it, it's totally crazy. Uh, to me it is uh, to put that much uh, effort into learning a fictional place. I do enjoy the books, I enjoyed the movies thoroughly, uh, I enjoyed the Hobbit movies. Um, but definitely didn't get into it like that. Uh, I, I kind of view it as like the Harry Potter people. Uh, the ones that are, oh, what what house are you? Are you House Slytherin or? I don't care. <laughs> uh, personally, I think Harry Potter is probably overrated, but uh, Anyways, so I, I thought I'd do this quick vid video and uh, lately for my daily smoke I've been doing a lot of uh, vanilla custard um, and enjoying that. I've been smoking that out of my Falcon pipe here. I usually smoke the morning blend out of this, but I decided this was an easier pipe to carry with the, uh, the metal stem, the removable bowl. I can throw it in my coat. It's not cumbersome. 
Uh, it's just very convenient for when I'm running around and I get a few minutes to um, smoke something out of it. And I happen to be downtown Kalamazoo today where um, the only tobacco shop in the area, he's actually getting out of pipe tobacco. Uh, he said he hasn't sold a single pipe that he has right at the front door underneath the desk probably 10 or 15 years um, I already bought out all of his uh, maple and rum blend uh, bought what he had left of the amaretto which I actually haven't tried yet so maybe I'll be doing a review on that soon um, and he still has a ton of the vanilla custard now I did go online and find that I can get the vanilla custard for two dollars an ounce uh, through smokingpipes.com. I'm fairly certain that it's the exact same blend, but I'm trying to encourage this guy to, you know, maybe get some new stuff or restock or um, in the hopes that maybe pipe smoking in Kalamazoo will pick up a little bit. Uh, I did get stopped in the street today uh, when I was on the mall walking by a shop and this guy came out and he's like, whoa, 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 you're one of those sophisticated guys that likes to smoke a pipe. And I was like, yeah, I do enjoy it. He's like, that stuff smells really good. And I'm thinking to myself, there's always a group of guys on the Kalamazoo Mall that are smoking cigars and they get the dirtiest looks from everybody. I've never enjoyed the smell of a cigar uh, definitely don't enjoy the taste of it. Uh, to me, I've never uh, understood the appeal. I don't know if it's just the, the rush of tobacco. I know that there's a flavor um, that cigar guys, that they crave. That there's a certain type of cigar that each guy enjoys. Um, whether it's a certain brand or a certain blend of tobacco in the cigar. But um, to me, I, I feel like smoking a pipe is an enjoyable activity for the pipe smoker and usually the people around them. Uh, unless they're smoking something like, oh, Prince Albert or recently, I was trying the Mixture 79. It's supposed to be an aromatic. It has this weird perfume scent to it. Uh, it's definitely a burly tobacco, which is, um, I'm noticing, fairly common with these, these cheaper over-the-counter tobaccos. Um, I just can't get past that perfume uh, flavor and the perfume scent. Uh, afterwards, uh, because I do smoke inside at home, um, I'll come back into the room and I don't really care how care for how the room smells. And I'm not really caring for the, the flavor all that much. Uh, at first, it was amusing because it was something new. Um, what I have enjoyed on the cheap end lately, uh, this velvet, which I smoke out of an old corn cob. Uh, this is an old Missouri Meerschaum. Uh, I don't see these stickers too often. And this thing, this thing has had a life. Uh, if you can see the coloration on it, uh, there doesn't appear to be any uh, hot spots, any burn points. So I try to smoke it cool. Uh, the velvet don't really have any problems with uh, any tongue bite. It is smooth. It kind of reminds me of a um, devil's food cake in flavor. Uh, I come across uh, 
uh, a lot of the cans, the old cans uh, for this at antique shops. So I was curious. I was surprised when it appeared at Smokes and Burdick. And so I picked up a bag. I think it was like three something for the bag. And um, I just remember opening it and it had definitely a burly scent to it. There's something else to it that I just couldn't put my finger on. And then when I started smoking it, it was uh, pretty obvious that there was definitely like a devil's food cake uh, taste to it. Uh, it was really smooth. It, I think velvet's probably the appropriate name for it because that is how the smoke felt when I was uh, um, taking uh, puffs off the pipe. So uh, velvet, I can recommend as a uh, daily smoke if somebody is so inclined to try it. Um, as for the Frog Morton across the pond, it didn't seem to have uh, the right moisture to it. I was getting a little bit of tongue bite off of this. Um, so I was a little concerned about that because you know the, the stingers on these are designed to cool the smoke uh, as you're as you're smoking it and Maybe it's the wrong pipe. Uh, maybe I'll have to try something else for this blend, but uh, I smoked two bowls out of this and I was starting to get a little bit of tongue bite towards the end. So it could just be the pipe itself. Um, so I might do another video on that to see if there's any difference when I try something else. Uh, this pipe, I have to say, uh, I have smoked other things out of this in the past, and it was a nice, cool smoke. So, with the previous experience, and then uh, trying this after cleaning it, um, I'm going to have to say that it's probably the tobacco. Although, the, the tobacco itself doesn't feel wet. Um, has these nice hearty ribbon cut pieces in here. Um, it feels like the same consistency as Frog Morton Cellar. So uh, I don't really know what the issue is. But uh, the flavor, I did enjoy the flavor. Um, I liked how it wasn't as smoky as Frog Morton Cellar, but the flavors overall weren't as dynamic as Frog Morton Cellar. Uh, it, it seemed to be more of a, um, I wouldn't say bland, <sighs> it, like a, a simpler version of that tobacco. So, I guess if you don't like Frogmorton Cellar and you want to try something that is not as complex as that tobacco, I would try Across the Pond. Um, but for me, I, I did smoke probably five or six bowls of Frogmorton Cellar before I stuck it in a jar and decided to keep a little for later. Um, I don't know what exactly I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to try it a couple more times. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do another review and uh, I'll have a different experience later with it. But, uh, yeah. Cool smoking, delightful fragrant, fra <laughs> fragrant, fragrant, top grade, Syrian Lydicaea blend. Eh, it seems to be exactly what it is. So, I'm just wondering why the hell I got some tongue bite off of this. And so I'm going to try to solve that problem. See what happens. Anyways, uh, nothing else going on here. So, see you later.